Tesla changed the way the public views electric cars. CEO Elon Musk's other company, SpaceX, is disrupting the aerospace industry in the same way. But their newest creation is by far the wildest yet. Today we're looking at why SpaceX built a stainless steel Starship. The new Starship is novel for a number of reasons, but the most remarkable feature is its steel frame. For those who don't know, steel is many times heavier than aluminium, carbon fibre and other materials usually used in rockets. This makes a huge difference when a rocket is trying to break through the Earth's atmosphere. Even an extra ounce of weight can adversely affect the success of a mission. In fact, WD-40 was initially invented to spray over an Atlas missile to prevent water from forming on the outside, simply because this would reduce the weight added by painting the missile. So why exactly is Tesla using stainless steel when lighter materials are available? As with many corporate decisions, it all comes down to price. In a recent interview with Popular Mechanics, Musk explained what motivated the switch. The expense was one factor. Carbon fibre cost $135 per kilogram and 35% of the material must be scrapped. You cut the fabric and some of it you can't use, the SpaceX founder and CEO said. So the true cost of the material is nearly $200 per kilogram, compared to just $3 for stainless steel, he added. Stainless steel's high melting point is also a big advantage, Musk told Popular Mechanics editor-in-chief Ryan D'Agostino. So typically, aluminium or carbon fibre, for a steady state operating temperature, you're really limited to about 300 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not that high, Musk said. You can take little, brief excursions above that, maybe 350, 400 if you're really pushing it. It weakens. And there are some carbon fibres that can take 400 degrees Fahrenheit, but then you have strength knockdowns. But still, you can do 1,500 or 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit. The Starship is meant to be an interplanetary vehicle, meaning it will have to cope with speeds of up to 13,000 miles per hour and temperatures of beyond 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This is well above the maximum service temperature of both aluminium alloys and carbon fibre composites. Entry into Mars' atmosphere has been achieved multiple times, but with nothing as heavy as the Starship will be, it will not be an easy task for it to slow down. In order to properly slow down in Mars' atmosphere, the Starship will have to maintain a heavy angle of entry for a long period of time. The amount of drag creates an enormous amount of heat. Because SpaceX will use stainless steel, the Starship will require a significantly lower amount of heat shielding. In turn, this saves a lot of weight and money and goes a long way towards the future of space travel that Musk envisions. Then, in March 2020, SpaceX announced that it would use the same material in Tesla Cybertrucks, a stainless steel alloy. SpaceX is still committed to stainless steel for both the 100-passenger Starship and Super Heavy, the giant rocket that will launch the ship off Earth. The company will just migrate to a different alloy, whose constituents SpaceX will tweak over time, Musk said. We should be able to do better in the 2020s than they did in, like, the 50s, you know, Musk said, during a keynote conversation at the Satellite 2020 conference, as reported by Space.com. So I think we'll start switching away from 301 maybe in the next month or so. We're rapidly changing alloy constituents and forming methods, so traditional names like 304L will become more of an approximation, the billionaire entrepreneur said in a tweet. At the time of Cybertruck's unveiling last year, Tesla said the Cybertruck's exoskeleton would be made from an ultra-hard 30x cold-rolled stainless steel structural skin similar to Tesla Armorglass Electric noted. Musk had claimed then that the vehicle would be fabricated out of the same material used in SpaceX's Starship rocket. The automaker had also said that if there was something better, we'd use it, while alluding to the need for eliminating dents and damage and affording passengers maximum protection. SpaceX wants to be able to launch each individual Starship three times per day, Musk added. That target number could conceivably be higher if not for the need to line up the ships properly for landing near the launch site, a process that could take three or four orbits each time, he said. Musk has big plans for the Starship. The aim is to create a rocket capable of eventually carrying humans to Mars, with up to 100 passengers on board each flight. Musk announced he intends for the new SpaceX factory in Boca Chica, Texas, to produce one Starship rocket every 72 hours. That fast rate of Starship production will be required if Musk is to achieve his lofty goals of carrying hundreds or even thousands of people to Mars. The aim is for the Starship to be reusable in a fast, efficient manner, with each individual Starship capable of being launched up to three times per day. The Starship is designed to be relaunched an hour after landing, with zero nominal work, Musk said. The only thing you expect to change on a regular basis is propellant. The steel switch is in keeping with SpaceX's Starship development strategy, which features frequent changes and testing to zero in on the best design. In April 2020, the Starship's third iteration, the SN3, was destroyed during testing. This prompted the launch of the SN4, which was the first craft to pass the cryogenic proof test. To 
prevent the SN4 from combusting on impact, oxygen and methane were replaced with similarly frigid but non-explosive liquid nitrogen. SN4 succeeded in completing a number of static fire tests before combusting in May 2020 due to a propellant leak. Then in August, the SN5 became the first prototype to perform a successful flight test, though it only managed to fly 150 meters. SN6 completed the same test in early September. Things are moving quickly in the Starship program, and the SN7, SN8 and SN9 are all in different stages of testing. In another example of cross-corporation collaboration, SpaceX will use Tesla batteries in some of its rockets. They appear to have installed four Tesla Model S battery packs together, which would give them an energy capacity of up to 400 kilowatt hours. It's the latest example of synergy between Musk's two main companies. Musk often talks about the difficulties involved in running two companies, but he also acknowledges some advantages of being active in two different industries. SpaceX aims to dramatically reduce the cost of rockets, and if there's an industry that's mastered the art of making complex vehicles cheap, it's certainly the automotive industry. On the other hand, Tesla has benefited from SpaceX's expertise of high-tech manufacturing techniques, such as stir welding, a technique SpaceX uses to join large sheets of metal like the ones used for the aluminium tank of their rockets. And this is far from the first innovation from SpaceX. They made space travel much more cost-effective than NASA ever did. The first lunar missions pushed science to its absolute breaking point. Unsurprisingly, this wasn't cheap. Project Apollo as a whole cost $25.4 billion, or approximately $153 billion in 2020 dollars when adjusted for inflation. Though the US is wealthy enough to afford this, they don't see a tangible benefit. But in recent years, two factors have made access to the moon much more viable. The first factor is improvements in technology that have made space travel more affordable than at any other time in history. NASA recently held a press conference announcing that they estimated it would only take 20 to 30 billion dollars to get a permanent human population on the moon. This is a fraction of the price that the space race cost in the 1960s. The second factor is the advent of private corporations traveling to space. NASA intends to partner with companies like SpaceX to build a space station and shuttle humans to the moon. In the past, space travel was purely a national prerogative, but as public interest waned, NASA lost a huge percentage of its funding. Since then, private companies have picked up where the United States left off and are perfecting technology to make space travel efficient and viable. SpaceX made headlines when it succeeded in recovering all three of its Falcon Heavy rockets in a single mission, meaning that a sizable proportion of the investment can be recovered for the next launch. All of this means that the cost of flying to Mars is plummeting. As a result, the era of space tourism is upon us. NASA has opened up the International Space Station to tourists, and already companies are buying rides to fly so-called private astronauts up to the laboratory in the sky for a visit. For approximately $52 million per person, you can purchase a seat to fly with SpaceX, once Elon Musk's space company begins flights to the ISS. Allowing tourists on the ISS is a major shift for NASA, as the agency used to prohibit private astronauts from flying to the station. Previously, private astronauts would have to fly on Russian rockets and capsules to reach the station. NASA will get $35,000 for each night a tourist spends on the ISS, according to agency officials. Pricing details on NASA's website reveal those costs largely go toward things such as life support, food, air, energy, and data. In 2017 alone, SpaceX delivered 48 satellites into orbit and 22,700 pounds of supplies to the International Space Station, and now holds more than 60% of the global share of commercial launch contracts. But SpaceX truly earned its place among the aeronautical elite and changed the economics of spaceflight by making its reusable rocket system seemingly as reliable as the sunrise. Elon Musk claims he is making progress on his plan to colonize Mars and save humanity from some eventual extinction event. Of course, many people are critical of Musk's attitude. His detractors believe that we should focus on saving humanity on Earth before launching into the unknown. In fact, his rockets send a tremendously large amount of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, thus increasing the likelihood of an eventual extinction event. Upon reaching orbit, the Falcon 9 rocket combusts many pounds of kerosene and releases more carbon dioxide in a few minutes than an average car would in more than two centuries. That kind of shock to the atmosphere is stoking concerns about the effect that launching into orbit has on Earth. But regardless, SpaceX is changing the landscape of space travel for generations to come. Between Elon Musk's Space Exploration Technologies Corp, Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin, and Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic Holdings Inc., a new space race has emerged between the planet's wealthiest individuals. Of course, the future is impossible to predict, but many people expect SpaceX to be the primary force in space exploration and colonization.